it's Jim from JetsonMax.com. On today's show, we are going to add CUDA support to the Intel RealSense D435 camera. Let's get started. In our last episode about the D435 and Live RealSense 2, we noted that there were some issues with our RealSense viewer. I promised that I would go back and do a little bit of development. Number one, to get it up and running on the Jetson TX1. And number two, to add CUDA support for image decompression. The CUDA code takes the native format of the image that's streamed from the camera and converts it into RGB, which is red, green, blue, or BGR, or RGBA or BGRA. So RGB is pretty much what you display on a screen. BGR is used by OpenCV, so you may find that useful also. Let's build our project so we can take a look at it. The first step is to patch the Linux kernel. There are several advantages of doing this. The first advantage is that we will be able to recognize the image formats that are being streamed from the camera. The second advantage is that we will be able to put timestamps on those frames. And the third advantage is that we will be able to recognize any specialized hardware that is on the cameras, such as an IMU. The camera that we're using, the D435, does not have additional hardware. So let's get started with this. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build Live Real Sense 2TX. We are going to clone that repository. Let's grab the address. Now let's switch over into that repository's directory. We have just flashed the Jetson with L4T 28.2 using Jetpack 3.2. We have a cheater script named build patched kernel. This is an automated script which will help us download Live RealSense download the kernel sources, patch the kernel sources, configure the kernel, then build it and install it. Let's do that. Why, yes, I would. Thank you for asking. The next step is to install Live RealSense. We need to reboot at some point. I just want to point out that there is some comments here in rebuilding the kernel on the GitHub account in the README file. And I will note here that build patch kernel TX has a parameter you can pass to it called no cleanup that will leave the sources for the kernel on board the device. On a Jetson TX1, you will need to remove the sources after the build because there is no free space available after that. Now our next step is to install Live RealSense 2.0. Here's a list of the things that it does. So let's reboot. We'll open up a terminal, switch over to our repository directory. And let's install Live RealSense. Make sure the camera is not plugged in. Before we start this up, let's go over a couple of things. In Live Real Sense, the major file that we added 
is in source CUDA. We add this folder. Let's open this up. So basically we have kernels to unpack YUY2, which is the format from the RealSense camera and convert it into a different format. So this one takes YUY2 and converts it to RGB. VGR, which is used by OpenCV. And the next two add alpha channels. Basically this code is a direct translation of the Intel code this CUDA code is called from image.cpp if you are in the hunting mood. Let's switch over to a different model. We'll go to mode zero. And run the RealSense viewer. We need to connect our camera. Let's do that. Let's turn on our RGB camera. So when it starts up, it has some issues apparently. It's awful blurry there in the background. Let me adjust the camera and the lights. So you can see that our CPU usage is now down quite a bit. We went from 100% to less than 25% on one CPU. You can also see that the frame rates are much higher than in our first version. Let's turn on the stereo module. So you can see that we get pretty good frame rates out of this now. You don't have quite the same stuttering issues. In real life, it looks like it's okay, probably 20 frames a second. Let's make this full screen. You can see that when we turned on the depth camera, we started using more CPU. I would assume that most of that usage comes from rendering this depth map. It's pretty dark in here, so it has pretty good low light performance. I did notice that during the daytime there are issues about the exposure. I'm not quite sure what they're related to yet. There doesn't appear to be any issue with the Jetson and the camera. It appears more to be about how the application actually integrates. So you'll notice that when we go into 3D mode, It's slightly faster than it was, but it still has issues. Let's take a look at the system monitor. So we can see that we have two CPUs that went to 100%. So they probably have the same problem that we encountered in the 2D version, which is the render loops don't have a rest in them, don't have a sleep. So they just crank up to 100% and it goes straight into dog mode. Let's see if I can get back to 2D mode. Now yeah, we got lucky. <laughs> so at this point you can see that it's actually performant. The map looks decent, kind of what you'd expect out of this type of device. It's not great, but it's not bad either. We'll have to take it outside and take a look at it, see how well it does. It would be interesting to compare this camera to the D415, which is a closer range camera. This is more for long range. So like when the shark is far away, you can see it still picks them up pretty well. So that's kind of our first foray into getting this up and running. 
there are a whole bunch of settings and technical information about this camera. I'm just starting to look through it and try to understand what type of performance we can actually get on it when it's on top of a robot. But this is the second step. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.